It's now my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, also from the University of Copenhagen, yeah. and here to talk about breaking the walls of intelligent 3D snacks. Please join me in welcoming Baskar Mitra. Ah, thank you so much. <clears throat> um, first of all, thank you. And today is a particular honor for me, uh, because let's face it, my presence on this stage is very unlikely. My father was a foreign student traveling from Bangladesh to India and settled there. And ever since he has settled, the problem that India has been facing for quite some time has been malnutrition, no fortified food products, and most importantly, there has been a quite number of reasons for which people are not able to make revenue more than $2 a day. So that becomes a really problem. I come from a small village, and all the people there, they earn at least $1.5 a day, which makes it really difficult. So in this effort, uh, the problem statement that I've identified is, um, can I have the next? Oh, it's, okay. Oops. It's about the problem statement that no fortified food product has been kind of developed for young school children and old people. No product has been made from waste products of meat and there has been no sorts of income strategies for ruler people and of course lack of opportunities for training. So this is my global empowerment which is to trigger economic growth, make fortified food product and also to make sure that your quality parameters are really in position. So what we do is we try to make a triangle based trilogy, what I like to call it, and we try to incorporate three of these essential elements which is enriching your nutritional quality, uh, make sure that you have a waste-based value-added product and you have a great shelf life. And to add in, we had another element which is called a color change, a color changing biscuit when you take a bite. Uh, but what do we do with this is we involve local bakers, animal farmers and NGO to create a symphony by the help of which we create a value-based food product. So this is my region, the potential regions from where actually uh, there's malnutrition. And we have started creating this product and we have applied the bus topology by the help of which we sell our food products. And I'm going to show you the products uh, in quite a while. They make something called the epicenter of self-sustainability. That means they create their own product and uh, the name is called Happy Flares. And they sell it to different housing. So the breakthrough solution is we have two kinds of sauces and that's the biscuit. And when you dip it in one sauce, it becomes violet. And when you dip it in another sauce, it becomes uh, blue. And what happens is we have made it in seven different flavors. And to make sure that we have product absolutely safe, we have kind of created a sensor that changes color based on moisture content and how much the product has been degrading. We have kind of improved local economy by quite a long time. And as you can see, there's a 40 to 50% predicted income. And that has kind of changed lives. This is breaking the wall of intelligent 3D snacks. Thank you. <laughs> Jury? Questions? Did you bring any samples for us to eat? Uh, no. <laughs> well, not now. They're, no, they're heavy. Okay. They're heavy okay. crackers. Okay. I gave you more hundred views on YouTube. Great. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, why colors? Because, uh, sir, it's, it's kind of fun for you product. So it's basically for young people. If you can dip a sauce and change its color, it, it's kind of attracting the marketability process. So I guess uh, changing color helps in, in certain bit. For example, in Japan, there are 35 different types of Kit Kat. Matcha tea, cinnamon green, and they have made a $1.2 billion business there. And uh, to, be, to be very frank, sir, I have kind of started making money out of it. <laughs> And uh, it has not only kind of improved the economy by at least 40 to 50 percent, but they're thankful because ultimately it's the, it's, the, it's the idea, it's the lattice structure that it's kind of affecting in a whole. So how is your colored food going to help on the $1.5 problem in, in the province? I didn't quite get that. So, so, uh, uh, so, so you make money from this or? So I make money, they make money. So it's, it's the thing is, 
the color change is a different aspect. It's, it's basically for the publicity kind of thing. But the main thing is this product is actually fortified. This is actually a meat cracker, as you can see. And there's no, apparently there's no crackers that has got meat content inside it. So when I meet by fortifying, I'm actually empowering the product by fortifying it with essential nutrients. That is going to help it against uh, deficiency, like sarcopenia, which is a protein uh, deficit disease. So that is my idea beyond it, uh, behind it. Sorry. Are there any other products on the market that has that same kind of a nutritional value in it as a cracker or something that, that's used in other areas? Uh, yes, madam, there is. But, but the main idea behind this was actually they create their own products. So when I, when I have the global trilogy, the triangle, it is those local bakers who are getting the local wheat from them, which is being unused. The animal farmers who are using the pig skin, uh, tails, toes to make the sauce. And it is the NGO or the social welfare committee who is kind of giving us permission to sell this product to, to village to village network, which is a topology in itself. Now regarding the, sorry, may I? What is the long term perspective? What is your long term ambition for, for this project? Uh, actually, madam, we have been talking with uh, McDonald's and thing is, uh, in India, uh, Anita Giri, who is the MD of the uh, McDonald's head branch in Kolkata, uh, they have kind of liked our products. And thing is, they have kind of given us uh, the incubator uh, funding, which is uh, around $7,000. So we are trying to make this product. So, and, and they want to make sure that they can have it in their buns in that particular area. And they want to make these small baby kit, kitty packs uh, where they can have this ch uh, color changing, yes, color changing uh, uh, bur uh, burger buns. What does it taste like? It tastes good. It tastes good. I, 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 did, ta I did taste it myself. It, it's a meaty flavor. Uh, it's smooth. Uh, and it's, it's kind of, there's a lot of spices inside. There's a lot of spices inside. And, and, and also we have made it in seven different flavors, you see. So... It gives you a kick. It's time for one more question from the jury. Just a clarifying question, but it's, it's a healthy product. It's a healthy product. Okay. Yes, 100%. I'm the lawyer, I'm sorry. I announced it today, it's a healthy product. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions from the audience? No? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, nice. Here you go. Thank you. Um, are there any ethical issues in you saying, I'm making money out of this? No, um, no what is your position as a researcher? How do, how do I see that? Uh, the, ethical the ethical position which where you're talking about is, is regarding that secret ingredient which I've made to make it blue. Now, FSSI, which is Food Safety Standards of India, says that you can add 20 milligram of this product in 100 gram of wheat. So I have made sure that I had several trials. That's why you see the relative concentrations I've made. So I tried it out up to the maximum limit. So the last one, which is dark, is uh, 20 milligram divided by 100 gram of wheat. But regarding money, believe me, everything is a cash process. And India is such an economy which is decentralized. Not like Denmark, we have a CPR number. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. So we deal in cash and whatever tax that we pay, we pay it to local panchayats of individual villages. And that's how the thing is done. What's the cost? Uh, 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 sir, it's, it's actually 15 rupees, uh, which means it's um, 1.4 Danish kroner. 1.4 Danish yeah. kroner. Yeah. Okay. What is that? You, you said the, the average income was one and a half US dollar? Yes. Okay, do you know what that equates to US, US dollars? Yeah. No. I'm just trying to get, a, get an idea of what the fraction is in terms of an average income. Is this, a, is this a costly product? No, it's not costly. Okay. I mean, with f with 15 rupees is the ideal price for, let's say, a chocolate bar of chocolate in okay. India. Okay, in India. So it's quite uh, okay. substandardized. Nice, wonderful. Any more questions? Great. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. One minute to score your speaker. <laughs>